We welcome you to this time of worship. Um, each week we've learned a bit more about how to um, worship in this manner, and I'm extremely thankful for the technology that has been created that allows us to stay connected in ways that, that we never imagined before. Today is Palm Sunday. Uh, it is the beginning of one of the holiest weeks in the Christian year. We will journey through this week together. Um, we have created a reflection guide that you will be receiving uh, by email if you've not already done so. It will also appear on our Facebook page on Monday morning that will lead you through some devotional times of mornings and evenings of this entire week. If you've not received one um, and don't have access to Facebook, please call the church office um, and leave a message and we will make sure that you get one. May our eyes now turn towards Jesus as we look into his wonderful face. May the cares of this world shrink away and may we worship in the presence of the living Christ. Join me in the call to worship. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light and where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let us pray. Lord, we have come this day 
seeking your presence and healing love. Be with us as we hear the words of hope and the words of compassion. Give us courage to learn and to grow that we may serve you faithfully all of our days. Amen.
We have the privilege of going to God in prayer this morning. Um, may you remember the prayer requests uh, that you have and uh, that you know about and remember those as we pray this morning. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we acknowledge that you are Lord of all creation. We ask that you be with us this day and in these times and in these weeks and months ahead and calm all of our fears in the midst of the uncertainties that we are experiencing. Help us to relinquish our control and put our trust in you and you alone for you are God. Remind us to continue to faithfully work in this world for good with gratitude for the many blessings that you poured out upon us. This virus that is spreading throughout the world feels like a strong storm right now that's pushing up against us. Let us turn to you in this time remembering your saving mercy and your love. Instead of being people of fear, give us the courage to become disciples who calm the storm of doubt and fear in our lives and in other people's lives. Help us to be the ones who bring your hope and your peace to a hurting world. Remind us once again that your presence is with each person and that you are in the midst of each situation offering your love and your grace. We thank you for the healing that you have offered us through Jesus Christ. As we begin to walk through this holy week, may we once again be reminded of your sacrifice we lift today those who are in need of your healing and your comfort. You know each situation and how difficult it is right now. Bring your healing, your peace, and your comfort to each situation. Help us to trust you and to fix our eyes upon your glory. For you are our hope. And we offer these prayers with gratitude and love and pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
responsive reading from Psalm chapter 31, verses 1 through 8 and 14 through 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction and have taken heed of my adversities. You have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. We invite the children into this special moment, this special message that is meant for them. You can see this morning that we are talking about a story about a boat that went across the Sea of Galilee. You'll notice that my friends have already gotten in the boat this morning, and I wonder, have you ever been in a boat before? I know that I have, and I know that many of you have. And as we talk about this this morning, I better join my friends in this boat um, for our journey this morning. As I get in, I want to make sure that I am journeying with them because I wouldn't want them to be out on the sea by themselves without any help in case something happened, in case maybe a storm came up to blow up against the boat. They would need some help. You know, have you ever been in a storm in a boat? It can be quite a frightening thing. I know that when I was in Israel, I went across the Sea of Galilee, the very sea that we talk about this morning in this scripture. The wind was blowing hard that day, and the, rock, the boat was rocking back and forth. It was almost enough to make you sick to your stomach. It can be a pretty scary thing being out on a boat in the middle of a storm. But that's what exactly what happened in our scripture passage this morning. The disciples had been out. Jesus had been um, out all day healing, um, telling stories, doing miracles, teaching among the people. And at the end of the day, he'd invited his disciples to get into a boat, very much like this one, to go across the sea. They were on their journey across the sea. It was night, and all of a sudden, a storm came up. The disciples got scared. They were frightened. The ship, the boat was rocking back and forth. The waves were coming in. A water was coming in the boat. And Jesus was asleep. And they went to wake him up to tell him that the storm had come. He said, why haven't you done anything? Do you not care about us, that you're asleep? And Jesus answered them. He said, you have little faith. 
and he calmed the winds and calmed the storm. It left the disciples saying, who is this man? Who is this? Jesus simply had to speak to the wind and the waves to calm them down. You know, when we started this story, I, I purposely got in this boat. I purposely got in it with my young friends here because I needed to be here in case something happened to them and that they were in the middle of the sea and they didn't know what to do. They needed somebody with them. You know, we all go through life and there are many storms in life. And the storms that we have in our lives aren't necessarily ones that produce a lot of rain and wind and thunder and lightning. We have a lot of different storms in our lives. Sometimes those storms are anxiety. Sometimes they're arguments that we have with our friends or our families. Sometimes we get afraid of things. Those are the storms that we experience sometime in our lives. Do you know, right now we're kind of going through a storm. Things are different for us. But we know that in the midst of going through this and in experiencing this storm right now, that we need someone in our lives, someone that will calm the waves for us. And as we go through this and go through any storm in our lives, I want Jesus to be in the boat with me. I want someone that I can call upon to calm my fears and to know that his presence is there with me. So let us pray. Oh, dear God, we give you thanks. We know that we are facing a difficult situation right now. And we're so thankful that you are with us. And that in our scripture that you promise that you will never leave us. And you will never forsake us. May you calm the storm in our lives right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We've come together today to worship God in so many ways. We've sung music, we've listened to music, we've read scripture, we've responded back and forth as passages have been read, and now there's another spiritual discipline that you're being offered to offer back to God part of what he has given you. Join me now in giving of your earthly possessions for the good of the church. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'd like to read two different scriptures for you today, both from the Gospel of Matthew. The first one, Matthew 8, 23 through 27, followed by Matthew 26, verses 14 through 27. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of a man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The second passage from the 26th chapter of Matthew. Then one of the 12, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When the evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to, to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord? Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. The word of God for the people of God. 
don't you feel like you are in a storm right now? What is so upsetting about being in a boat in a storm? Well, I'll tell you, Pastor Lori did a pretty good job of explaining it to us, didn't she? But let's look at it a little bit more. It may be that it isn't what you expected when you got up and you decided to go on a boat ride that day. At that time, the sun may have been shining. The waves were small and gentle, and they lapped against the side of the boat. It was calming to hear the sound of the water as the boat left the safety of land. Matter of fact, it was so right that you were looking forward to your time away from the hustle and bustle of life. You trusted the friends who were paddling and steering. Oh, and you yawned and stretched. Maybe you'd follow Jesus' lead and take a little nap while you went from one place to another. Your feeling of comfort was suddenly shaken to the core. Your eyes had only been closed for what you thought was a few seconds, but now everything was different. The wave that awoke you with its spray coming over the edge of the boat was only the first of many. The sun was nowhere to be seen. Only black rolling clouds spitting out what promised to be sheets of rain, pelting down on all of those in the boat, making it as wet inside as it was in the sea under the boat. The gently lapping of the waves had turned into pounding, and the boat itself was tipping back and forth, dangerously feeling like it was going to soon empty its cargo. That meant you into the sea. Your eyes frantically looked around at the others. Where is Jesus? He will know what to do. You catch a glimpse of Jesus. He's already receiving cries for help from the other passengers. Jesus, Jesus, do something. Wake up. Can't you see that we're going to all drown? Jesus is fully awake now. He looks at his friends who know him well, but who always seem surprised when he does just what they need him to do. He speaks directly to his friends. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then Jesus did what they wanted, no, needed him to do. He spoke to the storm. Yes, you heard it right. He spoke to the storm. And the rain stopped. The waves became calm again. The sun reappeared, and they were amazed. But the crisis was past. Life was getting back to normal in the blink of an eye. Don't you feel in this life at this time like you are in that boat? Only your boat doesn't look like the boat that we had in front of the sanctuary. Your boat looks like your house. The storm is the COVID-19 virus. It wasn't there when you started living your life in 2020. Life may have had a few challenges, but for the most part, you knew what to do. You felt like things were familiar. You had some control over your days. You, you knew what to expect at work. You may not have always gotten along wonderfully with your spouse or your parents or your children, but things were basically good. And then, all of a sudden, there was a storm. Everything was unexpected. Everything was out of everyone's control. There wasn't anyone to blame. There wasn't any way to change what was going to happen. Just as an act of nature, just as a storm, you needed someone somewhere to bring back the usual. Jesus, in your grace, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
Jesus does have mercy on us. Jesus does calm our storms, but he may not interrupt the course of action that is rolling out right now. Just like there is sometimes a reversal in a diagnosis of cancer, or someone in an abusive situation finds a better, safer way to live, and possibly to be loved, sometimes, though, there isn't a change, and we just have to live in this sinful, broken world and live into the consequences of this world's storms, living with the calm peace of the resurrected Jesus with the promise of the life to come. Even though we may not have our circumstances reversed, we will probably have to face this storm. We can learn several things from this passage. First, Jesus, in his humanity, experienced the same things that we experience. He was exhausted from the constant activity that surrounded him and preceded this event. He had quickly fallen asleep, trusting the natural circumstances of being in a boat with his friends. We are not being chastised for living our lives in normal ways or even for overextending ourselves. No, life is for living. God made us to live full, fruitful lives. Now, could the days that we are living reflect an answer to the prayers that many of us have asked for a spiritual revival? No, and yes. No, God is a loving God and will not call fire and brimstone down on his people until probably the end. And yes... God will use a natural occurring phenomenon to open the eyes of his people, to cause people to reach out to him, to realize that they need more than what they are able to provide by themselves. They need Jesus to calm the storms of their lives. The disciples did what we are to do. They prayed to Jesus. We are to put our hope and our trust in him. Jesus' response has to do with their level of faith, not the fact that they called out to him. They should have known that he would do what was needed. You can't both have great faith and have anxiety, doubt, and fear. I know that's not what you wanted to hear right now, but think through this. If we truly trust God, if we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we should know that there will be hard times in this life. From the Gospel of John, the 16th chapter, verse 22 and on, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe, Jesus replied? A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each of you to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. 
In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. God has this. Not maybe like you or I would like to have this story end, but we will spend eternity in the presence of the living God. In this scripture, we see proof that Jesus is the master of all the created order. He has the same authority that God the Father has. Together they created. Together they came to do what is beyond natural. But this is not the final kingdom. This is the time of trials and tribulations, suffering and sorrow. The joy that comes with our tomorrows is on the other side of glory. This second passage is one that we would usually be reading today. Today is Palm Sunday, also called Passion Sunday, as it precedes the events of Jesus' life between Palm Sunday and Easter. Just as Jesus had the ability to change the storm into calmness, he had the ability to change the persecution that was to come to him, the desertion, the pain, the suffering, the physical death, but Jesus knew what the plan was, and it was to reconcile the Father with all of humanity. Jesus knew that there had to be a sacrifice of the one sinless human being, the Lamb of God himself, for the redemption of all humanity, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And Jesus said yes. Jesus answered for the greater good of all humanity. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him, and he knew what would come after that. Jesus chose to ride the storm out, not to calm that storm. If we are to ride this storm out and face the last of our days here on earth, or if we are to be among those who are still here on the other side of it, God is still king of heaven and earth. Jesus still has the power to calm the storm. And we are still promised to have a joy that can't be stolen from us, the place where there is no more suffering and no more sorrow. Amen and amen.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.